there guys my name is emma and today i'm going to be focusing on the preservation and usage of historical buildings now as many as you know i am incredibly passionate about dancing and the community that it has the capability of creating so right now shameless plug for my club i am the president of the country dance club at montana state and i absolutely adore the community building that i've been able to pursue and promote through my club now i'm always thinking okay why can't why does this have to stop here why can't we make it bigger why can't we push this into the greater bozeman community Q, a really cool building in bozeman called the bozeman train depot Unfortunately, this building hasn't been used since the mid 70s and has sat as a graffiti backdrop for well since then. This building used to be one of the most prominent train stations in Montana and kept Bozeman connected to the rest of the nation and was huge in promoting the growth that we now have today. So why shouldn't we use this absolutely incredible famous building? So that turned my conversation into um, a talk with Sarah Rosenberg, who is uh, works in planning and historic preservation in the office of the city of Bozeman and has been passionate for building better communities through development and planning while maintaining their sense of place. That's huge for Bozeman. We have such historical roots and I think we need to keep sharing that. So Sarah and I had a whole conversation about how to make um, and use this building into something that could actually be used by the community. So with this, um, anytime uh, we want, I mean, like a, an adaptive reuse project or a uh, restoration of a historic building is to go through, it would be known as um, there's a specific application called a certificate of appropriateness. Okay. So that application, this is a nationwide type of one. Whenever we have a historic, when there's historic districts or any historic preservation program, you have this COA. So to do a restoration for this, you would have to do that. But I think this, I mean, from it also, it is contributing, but it also, I think, is a, yeah, it's on, you know, it's an individually listed landmark mm -hmm. as well. So it would be eligible for a ton of tax credits um, okay. because of that. I mean, there's, you don't always have to be a national um, individually listed, but you need to be in the historic district mm -hmm. for that. This one's both. So for any property owner who wants to do something like that, they have, they get some assistance and that goes through the state historic preservation office or SHPO. Mm -hmm. um, but working with tax or credits or rehabilitation mm -hmm. credits is not an easy process because it's the bureaucracy of right everything government <laughs> and so then like in the case of the u.s bank building yeah where they're removing the um 1970s or 1960s um yeah. plaster uh, <laughs> they are actually not going forward with the um arrest or, uh, with tax credits because okay. they're just like it's just oh, too goodness. much of a headache so it's kind of frustrating because um there's this really great tool but it's kind of like any tool out there to be able to have assistance is that there's so many hoops to jump through where it really should just be something that it's like, look at how good this can be. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And it's like, and know that there's like the legal standards and all of that kind of stuff. But. And here's a nice little picture of me standing next to the guy I have named George on the side of the building. I quote unquote definitely did not walk into the building and explore, but it has really nice high ceilings and a tiled floor. Or so I've heard. Hee <laughs> hee. In order to use this building, there, uh, there is help that's at our fingertips. However, with the Montana Historic Preservation Grants, you can apply for grants up to $50,000, but the amount of um, hoops that you have to jump through and the requirements for this are things that I just don't have time to list in this, unfortunately. And then the tax credits. So if you look over here, what we're listing here, 
that totals up to about 36 hours and 55 minutes of time that is expected to fill out the form for the IRS for the tax credit. 36 hours and 55 minutes straight of filling out a tax form for the IRS. That's just straight pain right there. It's hard work uh, to because it, nothing conforms to the underlying zone district for it. So meaning okay. that like it was built before any zone district standards. So your setbacks, right. your lot coverage, your lot lines, anything like that. But that's not necessarily something that can't allow you to move forward mm -hmm. with that prop like with that way it's because what then you could consider it is a legal non-conforming structure which would be what this is so to wrap things up sarah and i had a wonderful conversation about how this historical building that was once such a huge part of building bozeman could once again be used um, i'm currently in the throes of the financial planning and just an outlook of what that may be and planning on contacting the private owners here soon and fingers crossed that goes somewhere. Thanks guys.